Indie Feed. Emily's Legacy. Emily Dickinson's sunlit horses and snakes sliding through the grass live now on a New England farm, where they look over bales of freshly mowed hay and miss their patron terribly. The Northeast Pastoral has a long memory, but only back to Emily, who shuttered her windows when the ladies came to call, but never shooed away the bee or shrank back from the toad. The hills now try to remember life before Emily, and fail. Emily, who tied her hair back and released sparrows, who folded her hands lightly in her lap and gave birth to summer. Someday. New England will exist for a reason other than the memory of Emily. Some day they will all forget, and sunlit horses will be just horses once again. Some day that narrow fellow in the grass will be just another snake. Someday. Wow, wasn't that just amazing? I loved the imagery and sly wit of this poem by Mongo. It actually reminds me a lot of sort of a pastoral version of Billy Collins' poem "Undressing Emily Dickinson," but instead of slowly stripping down Miss Dickinson herself, as Billy Collins did, Mongo opted to strip down the New England landscape which Dickinson's poetry was steeped in. What a wonderful choice for a poet who loves poetry as much as Mongo does. Now, at this point, I have to be honest here. Mongo didn't know that I'd be recording this podcast for him. Humble guy that he is, I knew that he'd never ask a single soul to showcase his poetry on his own poetry podcast. But I think after hearing this magnificent piece, you could see why I thought it to be very necessary. And this being Indie Feeds. 501st podcast. I thought it was about time we heard some poetry by Mongo himself, and I think it was very much worth the wait. It actually reminds me of something my partner Shappy said to me very early on in our relationship. We first met at the 2000 National Poetry Slam in Providence, and as poets are apt to do, we exchanged chapbooks shortly thereafter. But he actually never heard me perform until I featured at the Slam he ran in Chicago, called Chicago's Mad Bar Slam. After my feature, he ran over to me, looking very relieved, and said, "Thank God, your poetry sounds like you." And I think he was referencing the fact that some poets have sort of an affected way of performing their so-called poetry voice, not often gelling with how they are off stage. And I always thought it to be a very odd statement to say. That was until I heard Mongo read his poetry for the first time at the Bowery Poetry Club. Up until then, I'd only known Mongo as you know Mongo, the tireless host of Indie Feed, champion of spoken word, and effusive and generous poetry commentator. So when I finally got to see him perform his own work, 
I saw that his poetry and performance reflected and in some cases intensified all the things I loved about him as a person and as a personality. I was thrilled. I wanted to stand up and say, your poetry sounds like you, and that's a compliment. And I am not alone in liking the poetry of our pal Mongo. In fact, this very piece has been included in the Right Bloody Anthology, The Good Things About America, alongside works by Derek Brown, Buddy Wakefield, Anis Mojgani, Brian Ellis, Andrea Gibson, Shappy Seascholtz, and hey, me, among others. Mongo, being who he is, will surely be broadcasting poems from this anthology, so stay tuned for that. But Mongo being Mongo likely wasn't going to include himself in the poems in his series Spotlight, so again, this little trick. So what can I tell you about Mongo? Well, how about this? Indie Feed Performance Poetry Podcast was not his first big foray into combining his love of poetry and his internet savvy. Mongo created the first comprehensive website about the life and work of Allen Ginsberg all way back in the early 1990s. The site was so extensive and respected that it was written up in the New York Times and mentioned on CNN in the wake of Ginsburg's death in 1997. At the time, Mongo worked at a certain Tony Ivy League college, and guess what? He still works there today as a records manager. That does surprise any fan of this podcast that this man is a paid archivist? I thought not. Mongo has been producing the Indie Feed Performance Poetry Podcast from his home in Vermont since January 2006. When I came through Vermont while on tour with the Junkyard Ghost Revival, he graciously opened his home to us, and I got to see where the magic happened in his recording studio slash gym slash shed on the side of his house. Now I can't help but picture him doing bicep curls while listening to performance poetry. Another poet that I know who does bicep curls is also a fan of Mongo, and was also gracious enough to let me record this podcast in his office slash gym you know you had to walk in under my pull-up bar just (laughs) just to sit where you are sitting Kristen. (laughs) that's right you recognize the voice of taylor molly and he had to interrupt to say some things about mongo so take it away taylor well what i have always appreciated about listening to the indie feed podcast is I'll, i'll be driving down the road And I'll think, particularly if it's a poem that I know, maybe I know some details Mm -hmm. about the performer or where it was recorded. Mm -hmm. Maybe the track itself comes from one of the Best Best of Urbana CDs. And I'll be thinking to myself, oh, you know, it would be really good if he would mention... And then he does. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'll say, oh, but you know, there's a little known thing that not many people know. And that's if you listen carefully, you can hear... Oh, and then he mentions it. So in the, in the 500 podcast that mm-hmm. he has done, he has just done such an amazing job of always providing us, the audience, with all of the information you could possibly want about the performances that we're listening to. It's such a gift to our community. And I definitely think that our community, um, the spoken word community, both the New York City and the National Poetry Slam community, has benefited greatly from the 500 plus podcasts that Mongo has produced. So thank you for that. But I do want to add that in addition to these podcasts, Mongo has amassed an amazing manuscript of poetry, which this poem is clearly a part of. A New Year's resolution of his has been to send more of his poems out for publication. You got to know that I'll be nagging him about that. But if you have any suggestions of publications you think might be perfect for him, or if you just want to support him and his poetry, please feel free to send him an email at mongo at indiefeed.com. That's M-O-N-G-O at indiefeed.com. Send him an email. I know that he'd love to hear from you. And that wraps up this show because I can already feel Mongo blushing from the future. Uh, I hope to be showcasing more of this amazing young poet's work and future podcasts. But until then, this is Kristen O'Keefe Aptowitz. And this is Taylor Molly. On behalf of the Indie Feed Performance Poetry Podcast. And we are signing off. Taylor signing off rather buffly. Indie Feed.